We are here to talk about the new project, St. Asonia, which has been just very, very, very well received so far. Um, kind of a new project for everybody, but especially a uh, different lineup. I know you're working with Adam and uh, a bunch of guys. Tell me a little bit how the project came about and who, who made the first move in setting this up. I uh, Sure, yeah. Um, I called Adam, actually. I, you know, I knew once he left Three Days Grace, uh, look, we had toured a bunch together back in the day, staying in Three Days Grace, and I've always been a fan of, you know, not only the band, but Adam and his voice, his melodies, lyrics, and, you know, what he did, uh, both in the studio and live. I thought he was, I thought he was a great front man also. Oh, yeah. So, uh, you know, Aaron was, uh, promoting, uh, his country career. So, uh, you know, I have all this music, and I just, I just called him up today. You want to, you want to hang out? I hadn't seen him in a while because, like I said, you know, we had tour together, mm-hmm. and I was uh, actually playing with uh, Jason Newstead in our tour yeah. in Toronto. And uh, I said, you know, I'm going to be in the area. It's the last show. I could stay in town for a couple of days, and we could hang out. And so that's what we did, and that's kind of how it all, kind of how it all started. You know, things went really, really well. Um, you know, just got kind of got reacquainted, worked on some ideas pretty easy. You know, I, uh, he made some suggestions, you know, started coming up with stuff pretty quickly. Uh, you know, fast forward, he had a thing with RCA. Mm-hmm. Um, so we went and did a demo. I had written, I'd written some more songs for him and did the demo. They really liked it. Um, that's kind of when we figured it was, it was going to be a band. We were going to make a record and, uh, so this January, we went in you know, to Chicago, we did the record, and uh, here we are. Awesome. Um, so was that, that was what, around 2013 or 14 when the when all the talks initially started? Was that like at the end of the Gigantour, you said? It was at the end of the Gigantour, exactly, it was. And then we kind of, we kind of didn't do anything for, it was almost about a year, but it was kind of, that was where the seed was kind of planted, where okay. we, we got together and we worked on some stuff. And, you know, Adam went through a bunch of personal things, yeah. and that's kind of what, you know, he, he had some things that he had to deal with on the personal side. And then, you know, it was last year again, probably around the summertime, and we, we stayed in touch and we talked. Mm-hmm. And, uh, um, you know, and I had stuff stained at a tour last year. And so, right. you know, after that, we kind of got kind of regrouped again, and I, uh, you know, I started writing some different things for him, and that's what led to us going to do the demo. Okay. Um, so, I mean, one thing that I wanted to ask in, in today's world of like social media and everybody, everything, everybody knows everything. How hard was it to keep this whole thing as tight and secret as you did for how, as long as you did? You know, for me, I had none of that. So it was real easy. Okay. Um, so, I mean, I've never, never been on Facebook. So, right. or right. I don't never seen what it, I've never seen what Instagram is or Twitter. I don't do any of that stuff. Right. You know what I mean? So, um, so for me, it was really easy. <laughs> you know what I mean? I just kind of go about, go about my thing and, uh, you know, but, you know, it was true. The you know, manager was like, oh, we finished the record. Like, oh, you know, nobody, nobody really knows about this. And it wasn't like I was keeping it a secret. I mean, I, I had mentioned that. I remember doing press for, for some stain shows and like, what are you doing? And I said, oh, I was, I said, you know, I just did a demo with Adam and, you know, we're, you know, I'm going to write some songs, but nobody really picked up on it or whatever. So it wasn't like yeah, that. We were trying to keep this great. that never, nothing ever really came out about it. You know what I mean? So right. that's surprising that nobody really picked up on that. Cause it's like, I mean, come on. I mean, you're working with Adam. I mean, I can't believe nobody put, uh, put everything together there for <laughs> at some point. Um, yeah, no, nothing came in, you know, and then managers like, oh, look, nobody knows about try and, you know, make it a, you know, more of a surprise thing because the record's done and we're ready to go out and work, you know, so. Right. Does that make it a little bit less stressful when it's like, we don't have to worry about questions after questions after questions. We can wait, you know, and now the record's done, we can talk about it uh, a little bit less stressful that way. No, I don't think so. I mean, listen, you know, I mean, this record really wasn't very stressful. It was fun. I mean, I, I knew what we had, and I was very excited about it. You know what I mean? So um, that makes things a little bit a little bit easier, I mean, going in. Because, you know, 
if I would send Adam, you know, music to a song and we were together working on it or whatever, you know, he, if he liked it, I mean, he had lyrics written in, you know, half hour, 45 minutes and I could, you know, you, you could, and they're usually great. So, um, you know, so you kind of knew what you had and, and with, and with that, I, I just felt comfortable when we went in the studio. And listen, things changed a little bit, you know what I mean? But, uh, uh, for the most part, I mean, you know, we, we kind of, we kind of knew, you know, right. roughly what we had going in. Okay. Um, I mean, you, you've worked with, obviously worked with Aaron for a long, long, long time with Stained. Then you work with Jason Newstead. What, um, is there any difference writing songs with Adam as opposed to writing with Aaron or other front men? Or is, is it pretty much the same process for you guys when you go into write? Yeah, no, it was, you know, that was the thing. It was, it was, it was pretty easy. It wasn't really much different. I mean, listen, I, I consider my job is I have to come up with music that, that, you know, whoever it is will, will be inspired by it and want to sing over it. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, the problem that I have sometimes is I'll write something, you know, seven different ways or whatever, just because I'm not sure exactly. So it's really good to get with that person finally and say, hey, look, we can go this way. This, and they'll say, no, no, that's, you know what I mean? That, that's the mm -hmm. way right there. Or they'll make some suggestions and help guide it to where they want it to be, you know, for them to be able to sing to sing over it. So right. um, I don't know. And that was the thing with Adam where it was, it was pretty easy that, you know, I would play him something. And like I said, I mean, if he liked it, uh, you know, he might have a couple of suggestions, a couple of changes. Um, we would do that. I would either demo the song or, you know, or change it right then, give it to him. And he would just go, you know, write, uh, write melody and lyrics to it. Okay. Um, your guys' first show, your debut was Rock on the Range, which is the, like, the biggest show you could possibly, um, possibly play for your first show. What was... Take me through like the the feeling you've got when you're walking up to that stage at Rock on the Range. You hadn't been announced. You were billed as like the special guest, and you're about to go on the stage. I mean, what was that feeling like? Exciting, you know. I mean, I mean, we were we we were ready. You know, I mean, we had rehearsed, and I think I think everybody was pretty comfortable with what we had to do. I mean, listen, I, I think we did like I don't know six or seven songs. I mean, you know. At this point, we've all done this, you know what I mean? So to get through like a half hour set was, you know, was, was fun. It was one of those you blink and it's over, you know? Right. So, um, so, I mean, it was really exciting. I don't think there was, I mean, I'll tell you the one thing that I was, I was annoyed by was that, you know, we had this uh, backdrop made and it was real windy and it's kind of raining on and off and, and right. they went, they flew it for the first song and I turned around and it was they didn't even want to fly it for that. And they, I turned around and it was down. That was the one thing that bugged me is we didn't use our backdrop. But other than that, I mean, uh, it really was, uh, really was, it was fun nice. to go up there and be able to, you know, finally play these songs nice. live. And if the backdrop is the, is the biggest thing that, that, it, that went wrong during the show, that's a pretty good thing. There's so many things that could go wrong during a first show. If that's the only no, thing. No, totally. <laughs> Listen, it was brought out, you know, like I said, we've all done this. We know enough yeah. guys that are that are good at what they do to help us too. So we had, yeah. you know, we had good guys, you know, working for us up there that you know we all knew we could rely on and trust and and uh, and then our pros. So you know, mm -hmm. with that, you know, Definitely. comes some uh, some security also. Definitely. Um, and then this fall, you guys are hitting the road for what I think is going to be your first uh, your first full on tour. You're hitting the road. You're going to be going out with Seether for a couple dates. And uh, what better way to go out and uh, really make uh, make a statement for that first tour than going out with a band like Seether? You guys, you and Adam and everyone else in the band, you guys all go back so far with those guys. Um, so it's almost like the perfect combination for a tour. Totally. I mean, it was it was great. I mean, uh, you know, Sean called and said he wanted you know he wanted us to do the, do the, the tour of that, which was uh, which was fantastic. So again, you're right. Yes, we've bought. Uh, tours and a lot of shows with those guys so it's uh it'll be great and we have a little headlining thing coming up here mm -hmm. uh actually it starts next sure i think it's like next friday nice. so uh we're actually starting to rehearse now and uh getting ready for that for a couple few couple few weeks and then uh you know a little couple weeks off and then into the right into the caesar thing 
Awesome. Um, man, <clears throat> so I mean, outside of the touring, just lots of touring coming up over the next year, I'd imagine, um, for you guys just promoting the record like crazy. Any plans for maybe looking down the road? Is this, is this looking to be like a, mul a multiple album like thing, like a full, uh, like a, a long-term project for yeah. you guys? Yeah, no, for sure. That's really, that's definitely what the plan is. I mean, it's, uh, you know, I mean, besides some songs that, you know, we did finish and record that we didn't use, there was other songs that, you know, we had been working on that, you know, we, at the end of the day, we, we really didn't need for this record, but there was, you know, there's plenty of other ideas out there. And, uh, you know, uh, you know, Adam's always writing. I'm always writing, uh, you know, we'll be on the road. That's pretty much, pretty much what I do when I'm, you know, far away from my family, I'm going to utilize that time. I, mean, I pretty much play guitar all day long and, and record and work on music. So, awesome. uh, you know, we'll all be out there together. So, It'll be a great time to share some of that and you know uh, start start getting some some new ideas together. 